We're so excited. We're here at the AXO, the NAACP AXO Art and Science Exhibit. And uh, we're so pleased to be with Alfred Dudley, who's done this magnificent drawing of our heroines. And, and I love how he incorporated his own image right here. <laughs> Alfred, explain to me this wonderful right. uh, painting so, or drawing that you've done. All right, so this is, you, we could call it a blueprint. Because a blueprint. Okay. this is entitled Black Rushmore. Right. Wow. So, okay. so each person on here is a symbol of not only their own interactions with themselves and other people and the change that they've made, but also the impact that they've had on me being an eight year old African American male here in 2014. So the reason why I chose Stokely Carmichael from the beginning, like he was the first one I drew and knew I needed to involve, specifically because of the fact that he was involved with uh, you know, just the march on yeah, Washington. Uh, yeah, the Freedom Rides, uh -huh. all that. He was leading that, orchestrating things. And at such a young age, and me being 18 and having the opportunity to be here right now is, tan is you know, because of that. And I'm doing these things because I want to be on that level to respect what he's been done mm -hmm. and what he's done for me. Okay. Then we've got MLK, who has dreams. His dreams are now a reality. Well, not completely, but a reality for me right now. Him along with Stu, that's why they're connecting. Yes. That's, why they're, that's why they're directly touching, because they were around the same time. They influenced each other and thus everyone else. His dreams became a reality. He dreamed of a black president, which we have right here, Barack Obama. Now, one of the funnier parts about this piece was I thought about how when I was younger, my parents always said, oh, you can be a doctor, you can be an engineer, you can be a, a telemarketer, you know? Now I can be the president, you know? And then, on the far left, at the end, you have this guy. You don't really know him that well. You just met him, he just got here. But, if it wasn't for these guys, he wouldn't be here. And what's more is, 10, 20 years from now, I have dreams too. I want this to be here. I want this to be built. There are plenty of mountains ready for a black Russian. Ready. And what, what inspired you to think, let's say, out the box as you do, but also internal because you have incorporated your own image. But what made you think about, I want this on the side of a mountain? How, what, what kind of inspired that kind of uh, determination to have your image on, and on all of our legendary leaders on the side of a mountain? One of the things that I'm constantly reminded, just simply out of my own natural thought process, is, is that I'm, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for a lot of things. Period. I wouldn't have. This, I wouldn't be wearing a suit. I wouldn't be here at Axel right now talking with you, lovely people. And I want. I figured, like Martin Luther King just got his mon monument down in D.C. Excellent. But we haven't. Haven't. It's grand. It's very large. But I've always wanted something that'll immortalize them, like the presidents in Mount Rushmore. I think that's. I think that's one of the greatest things we could do to pay respects, especially to the others. Like there were others outside of Martin Luther King. Barack Obama has just traded, just treaded ground already. We're expecting another black president at least in the next 40 years. Yeah. At least one. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, so hopefully we got, it goes on and on. Exactly. You know? Or next, next president is going to be a black guy. You know. And that's that's exciting. What I find very interesting, sometimes we, when we talk about Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King, Barack Obama, especially to some of our uh, young African American males, I think they believe that it's it's far reached. But I love how you feel that you believe that it's not far reached. It is you as well. You are the new generation. Definitely. And that mindset, how did you actually get that kind of mindset to know that their their successes is really your future? How did you find how did you know that that, that enough to know let me put myself in this photo, in this drawing? Well, I personally spent a lot of time looking at research videos of civil activists. Number one, they know how to speak well due to their religious backgrounds. Most of them were preachers, as a matter, which, as a matter of fact, truly. So I spent a lot of time naturally being influenced by them and speaking in the way that they speak, in their vernacular, which I think is important, you know, 
So I, I naturally felt as though I am a product of their design. I'm a product of their dreams, ideas, motives, even the way they spoke or even conducted themselves visually. Mm -hmm. okay. And now tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you grow up? Did you come? Um, you, you know, I came your parents? from. I came from. A, I came. I, I grew up. I grew up in a single parent household with my mom. My dad was involved in my life. They just had their own tr quarrels and troubles. But um, I, had a, I had a relatively religious childhood. My mother made me go to church every Sunday, you know, until I got used to it. And now I'm here right now. That's right. And so where do you want to see yourself, let's say, five, ten years from now? Five years from now, best case scenario, of course, I'll just have my own studio by then and I'll be established. More realistic case, I may or may not be at Yale University getting my Master of Fine Arts. A year from now, I'm going to be at Cooper Union getting my uh, BFA. Uh, I'm not finishing, but you know, I'll be there working towards it. And 10 years from now, same thing with the studio. Okay. But I might be teaching too. Because teachers, you know, I think the youth are important. You know, I, I generally like talking with people. I like being around people. I like being around kids. I like being around fresh people, you know? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It's more interesting being around somebody who's influenced by everything you just did, mm -hmm. you know? You were your personal image with your hair and yeah. all that. Now, what is this symbolizing? Well, technically my hair, all right, this is an afro, of course. Um, I actually get little rashes behind my ears because my hair falls. It doesn't naturally go upwards. Oh. It's very light. Oh. It's thick but light. And um, I, I usually, I, I figured, I, I wasn't I wasn't a more of a dreadhead. I wasn't more of a, I wasn't, uh, I didn't really like my hair cut close short. My head shape is funny. Um, I didn't want a mohawk. I didn't want, you know, any of those braids. I thought they were cool, but I, I just, they weren't for me. And this came as a thing, I put headbands in my hair at night so that I wouldn't get the rashes anywhere. And then I woke up, and now we've got corrugated areas of an afro, now dimensionified by the headbands, and now you have this. Okay, I love it though. 